of uh, Vino, and, and there is a reason for that, because you live in a winery? Well, I don't live in a winery. Sorry. That's okay. I'm accustomed to the microphone. Oh, I'll be a pain in your head. Okay. You can help me out. Mm -hmm. um, I actually live right down the driveway from uh, the winery, and uh, these are some of our wares. Uh, the Super Hudson is sort of our homage to the Super Tuscan producers in Italy where they had the audacity to use French grapes to make their wine better. And so now uh, Fred and I make wine using West Coast fruit, either from California or Washington State, as, long, as well as uh, New York to make better wine. And, and first say your name, you're Paula, Paula Cherubino from yeah. Cherubino Smith Wine. Right. And Fred Smith is my partner in crime. And he's on tour with Billy Ficker right now. Yes. Billy yes. pl plays with me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Billy plays yeah. with me a lot of times right on this stage at Adam's Shrunken Head. I, know, I wanted him to play with me last week, but he was like, I'm in Barcelona right now. I'm in Barcelona. Now they're in Bergen, Norway. How cool is that? I'm so I'm happy for them. Yeah. They're excited. They you know, Chris is, is happy as a clam. He loves playing, so. So it's does Billy. Thing. Yeah. It's a thing. Television. That's all we're talking The Mighty Rhythm section. Yeah. He doesn't know when he gets back on Sunday, but we've got a lot of bottling to do when he gets back, so he has to change his his base hat to his winemaking hat. So do you do you ever do what like Lucy did? You know, people always ask us that. Um, the first time that we made wine was in 1999 in my apartment on Houston Street. And what made you do it? Well, my grandfather made just the best. Red Zinfandel. It was always my benchmark wine. And uh, so I grew up with that, and I found myself uh, in retail sales and wholesales, wholesale sales, and I ended up in some of the finest wine stores in New York, uh, Sherry Lehman, uh, Ledoux's Wines. Like working, you mean? Working, yeah. But in nice oh, wait, your father was, my grandfather used to make wine. He was, he had a cooperative farm on the West Coast. And he uh, arrived there from Italy. And uh, that's where they did it, like Lucy. Yeah, they did it like Lucy then. He used to always have like a pair of rubber boots hanging oh, really? in the wine room, just in case the, the wine press broke. And, uh, but we actually used a baseball bat. Fred brought his baseball bat over, and we crushed the grapes with that. Actually, Tish and Snooky helped us. Wow. And this is another wine that we made. And the, uh, did, they, did they pick the grapes? Well, we don't really pick the grapes. We always say, you know, when people say, well, what kind of, what do you grow? And I say, well, we let the professionals grow. And we let them bring us the grapes, and we make the wine. Oh. So that's... So you're just the... We're the winemakers. It's, it's two different art forms. Okay. Uh, there's viticulture and viniculture. And gotcha. Some people that are excellent farmers, and then other people that just... So, so we we tend to make very. Good How was that first one on Houston Street? You know, it worked out pretty well. But I actually had uh, the first vintage that we made. 
It was Fred and I, my friend Helga, and my mom and dad were visiting. So I had my dad as a consultant. He used to make wine with my grandfather. And we did everything natural. We only made about 15 gallons, but we're, we had crushed the grapes and we're waiting for it to ferment. Nothing's happening. So um, my dad just to, you know, grabbed a pot off the stove, filled it up with the grape must, warmed it up, stirred it back into the barrel, and everything started. One wine called Eaten by Bears uh, that's at the Culinary Institute up in, in Hyde Park. So they're having a big dinner featuring our bears. And nice. uh, so that's the only time we ever get to eat there. That's so, an honor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, we, we had a one dinner, uh, it was 1 12 2012, just the very, they have a winter dinner series. And so they had us, uh, that was the last time I used a microphone. <laughs> Was uh, we had to do first a, a formal tasting in front of about 70 people, and then they marched us off to uh, the American Bounty restaurant and paired our wines uh, with the whole all the courses. So we were very lucky. So, so where is the the place? Well, we're about two hours north of New York. Um, after we grew out of an apartment, we we moved upstate about 10 years ago. I can't believe that it's been 10 years yeah. already. And so we're right north of Rosendale, so we're between New Paltz. Oh, okay, all right, so, so New Paltz is further. New Paltz is further south, Kingston is further north. It used to be the first, state, the first uh, capital of New York State until the Hessians burnt it down way back when. Except for the Hoffman House. So yeah, yeah, right yeah. up there. So it's near like, um, what's that school that's up there? Bard. Uh, oh, Vassar, yeah. uh, SUNY New Paltz, so yeah, Maris Pole. So it's, yeah. it's kind of near Woodstock, yeah. yeah. And so we just have a we just had a, a dirt uh, floored barn occupied by a woodchuck that we had to chase out, and oh, and uh, and so um, we kind of refurbished the barn, made it into a winery. Fred has a little studio upstairs. And what do you call it? Cherokee you know, Smith. Do you have like weddings there and stuff? Well, we had our wedding there, but that was before we started making a lot of wine. But uh, but we don't. We're now trying to trying to get it ready to receive. But since there's only two of us, it's, yeah, we usually uh, do tastings by appointment, okay. and then we do all the festivals. So we're kind of right getting ready to get into our festival season and travel all Good over the for state. You. Wow! So do you have competition up there? Well, we have. It's we're sort of we're sort of uh, outliers in a way, which is fine by us. I mean, we've chosen to. I'm a, an old West Coast girl. I grew up in Seattle, and I love the Rome varietals that grow on the West Coast and do not grow in New York. So what we've tried to do, we've sort of set ourselves aside because we use both West Coast grapes and New York grapes. The New York grapes bring the acidity to the wine, and the West Coast grapes bring the uh, luscious. So that's our little MO, and we're sticking to it. And this, this is completely, uh, this wine really says it all. I mean, this is mostly New York Blau Frankish, also known as Lemberger, and then we add some California Syrah and Petit Verdot to it, just to give it a little bit more power. And then uh, the Rock and Roll Red this year is a really obscure grape called Valdigue. And Valdigue, yeah. And uh, in California, they call it Napa Gamay. And because it's very Beaujolais-like and fruity and just kind of a lovely wine. Yeah. You can say Beaujolais, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, don't, don't, don't fish and stick. You have a hair color called Rock and Roll yes. Red. As a matter of fact, yes. yes. You can just email to say hello to you and to yes. remind you yeah. that one wild party night with Fred and Tish came up with that name, yes. Rock and Roll Red, yes. because it was a manic, manic, manic color. hair color. Yeah. Yeah. Color any day. You we know, love Manic Panic. I don't think they even had the hair color. I just remember Tish saying, you know, 
and then she make a rock and roll bed. What a great name for a wine. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I said, well, geez, how come you don't have a hair color? And now they do, so we link yeah. back and Yay! forth. Our wine tastes better than theirs. So for their beauty. Uh, 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 <laughs> I wonder if you can yeah. use this on your head. Yeah, you could. It gets a little dark sometimes. Yeah, so. right. Burgundy yeah, rock and roll red. Indeed. So, wow. And then uh, they celebrated their 30 year anniversary. Yeah, 37 years. Yeah. But on their 30th anniversary, they used that picture to send out their emails and, re- and invitations. Yeah. Which the and funny thing is, their release date is my birthday, oh, like 10 right. years later. Exactly. Right. July 7th. Oh, man. Seven seven. seven seven. Yeah. And uh That's when they opened the shop, seven seven seven. seven. Right. That's an incredible It was a good year. Yeah. And a lot of fun. Well, it went four with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so uh we took the image off the internet and made a little little bottle for each of them with that picture on it. Oh, that's cool. And so, you know, we took Tish's advice and we kept, you know, trying to come up with labels for our rock and roll red and and Fred was looking for Red faces and you know, red. No, Billy, not just Billy always drinks red wine. I wonder it's because of you guys. Oh, yeah, we've made him. He's yeah. been a good customer yeah, for I'm a sure. long time. I'm I'm Billy. Sure. He always <laughs> drinks his red wine. Yeah, it's good for him. I know. Exactly. And, uh, and so, you know, after we kind of came up with all these ideas for a label, you know, it just kept coming back to that image. And so, so we called Snoopy and, and Fred asked her. You know, we just keep trying to come up with a label. Is it okay if we use your mugs on the on the front of the label? And she said, yes. And she said, do we need to ask uh, Tish about it? She went, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do it. You know? And so there, that really makes it special. It certainly is. They've been with us from the very beginning. You know, even like handy stemming the grapes with us in the backyard. And oh. it's been really and I just want to say hi, Jeannie. We love you. Hi, Jeannie. Yes. Hello, love. And um, we're thinking of you. Yeah. And next time in London, let's get together, all right? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, do you want to get the website of how people can purchase your wine? Sure. sure. Um, it's www.cherginosmith.com. That's our website. Spell that Cherigino. Okay. It's <laughs> C-E-R-E-G-H-I-N-O. Yeah. Cool. And um, today happens to be National German Chocolate Cake Day. Whoa. We couldn't find German chocolate cake, but we're getting some liquid German chocolate cake in a minute. It's not red wine, but it's That's pretty okay. pretty good. But we do have Swiss German chocolate cakes for Ooh. you. If and when you share a skeleton from your closet, we we love to hear something a little naughty. Did you ever like drink too much wine one day? Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's that's happened. That's happened. Has, has anything happened due to that? Hmm. Well, we had actually an offshoot of our wine when we were still making it down on. And he's been in on this too. He's we've had him in the backyard, stemming grapes and, and all. But uh, we had there was an offshoot of our wine making. There was we had finished the fermentation process. We filled up the carboys. And one of them, in the middle of the night, he floated. And so we thought, oh my God, what are we going to do? This is going to be, you know, big mess. And so we had to go back to Brooklyn, find our little Italian man at uh, Milano's. And I said, what are we going to do? A whole, you know, 15-gallon Demi John exploded. And oh my goodness. And so he gave us a little packet of... of uh, Carob and yeast, and he said, "Oh, you got to make the Sagundi fermenti." And I'm like, oh, "All right." And he said, "You got to get some sugar." And I just went, wait, 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 wait. I don't, I don't put sugar in my wine. He says, "No, this is a Sagundi fermenti. Just all the sugar goes away. It turns into alcohol." And so we made an offshoot of our wine called Coney Island Red. Ooh, ah, that's a manic panic color. Oh yeah. And so we found this great picture of Tilly and and uh, roller coasters down in Asbury Park, and uh, and so we made a great label, put it up in jugs, of course, not fancy bottles or anything like that. It moonshine was. Yes, it was. It was the Coney Island Red. And so we had a party. Many people invited. People were 
forgetting coats, umbrellas. They ran out into the streets. They're all outside, and God knows what happened after they left us. But um, but there were plenty of stories to be told after the Coney Island Red experience. I do. That was some wild party. Wow. So I learned um, my lesson. Yeah. Did you did you forget anything that you don't remember? I always have someone that's going to remind me of anything. Yeah. Yes. It's always something there to remind always, you. Well, that song is today. That song happened today. It was on the charts. Uh, yeah. So would you like some uh, Swiss German chocolate? Oh, of course. No, this is going to be my lunch. Yay. Yeah. yeah. All right. That sounds good. And um, would you like to push a button on our fun little sound machine? Anyone you want. That suits you, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for visiting. Anything else you want to ask Paula? No, I just know they can Google rock and roll red wine, and that'll come up yes, to your wine too, if they don't really remember how to spell sort of Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Okay, Paula, fun. say thank your name you, again. Paula Cherubino. Cherubino. Smith, we're responsible for Cherubino Smith wine. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We'll be back. Wow.